one and then two on the yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we get going? Let's Should talk we need about to reset this. I think we're good. I think it stays up for ten minutes. Yeah, we're good. I don't know. All right, let's talk about the UFC. All right, UFC two eighty one. Welcome back. Yeah, throwing hammers podcast number not so sure. How about that? Three, three. Is it three? Two, three. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Well, it's UFC two eighty one. We matter. know that. So there we go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So yeah, we'll just. I mean, we can talk about prelims, but really. Scanning over the prelims, I mean, we're not going to talk about all these, but... Um, I mean, Molly McCann, we can start with, just because... I mean, yeah. just touch on that even, just because she got absolutely... I think the funniest the thing with that is that just goes to show the power and persuasion that these big media companies have on their athletes, like Barstool, because, I mean... Uh, raise your hand if you knew that she was fighting a hometown hero at MSG going <laughs> exactly. into that fight. I didn't, so I mean, well, and apparently the crowd didn't either because yeah. they weren't even cheering for Aaron Blanchfield. She was just because all you hear about is Meatball and, Molly and yeah. Aaron. This Aaron Blanchfield is apparently the next, like the next, a, like the next her. Khabib of she the is her. Division. Yeah, 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 she is I her. Mean, yes. Definitely, she looked amazing, and I think it was a total mismatch. Yeah, I also sure. don't think Molly's. Uh, her she's not, she's not done, but I mean that was just not a good look. She got oh. manhandled. Yeah, I mean, well, it was super clear that she can't. She can't. Her ground defend work. on the ground. Yeah, I mean, just stand up. Yeah, maybe, but I mean, stand up looks looked good in the last number of fights, obviously. But yeah, this was not. <laughs> she's like that explosive stand up. Got to get you on the ground before you get her on the ground type yeah. of fighter. I agree. I mean, one thing I did like about Molly watching her is she was really aggressive. You know what I mean? She was like in her fights in the last couple knockouts. I mean, she had those like spinning back elbows and things like that. Things you don't see out of, um, you know, yeah, super, fighters like Molly. Yeah, so I don't know. Of course, a lot of energy, super aggressive. But when she got took taken down and instantly put in a crucifix, yeah. that just doesn't it doesn't bode well for anybody. And no. and it doesn't. I feel like the people that get put in a crucifix, it seems like you know those people are not good at them. No, you know, I mean it's such a like, dominating position to have I mean, someone who might have talked. Put in, you know what I mean? I feel like yeah, who right. might have talked, but it just seems like the, you know she well, just instantly got put in that position and didn't know what. To no, it's a very va- it's valid as fuck because like I mean obviously like the extent of my wrestling knowledge isn't crazy, but like I wrestled in high school for mm-hmm. a wee bit of time, and there's definitely some moves where like post match you don't want to be getting onto the bus having exactly. been put in that. You know, For it sure. just will show like yeah. the difference in level between the different guys. You know, definitely. Or it's like, oh wow, he did that to you. Exactly. Like, you know yeah, I mean? you, you let him do that. Yeah, like, right. yeah, she, exactly. yeah, she got crucifixed yeah. at MSG. You let her do that, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever. Not much to talk about there, other than you know, really, Aaron Blanchfield. I mean, really, I not good for her. She is looks like the next real deal, and it seems like <laughs> she <laughs> just don't know. You know, I'd love to see her fight somebody. Somebody. I mean, I think she was ranked twelve. I mean, they should. She looks like uh, the you know whatever they should they should move her up like they did with uh, Sean O'Malley and just move yeah. her up and fight somebody really good. Yeah, exactly. Fast track someone like her. I mean, maybe even that'll just help her have yeah. a bigger name too. You know, what I mean, oh my God, Blanchfield's now fighting Amanda Nunes. Like, wow, you know, that would yeah. be yeah, yeah, exactly. Be cool. Right. I mean, um, you know, other ones we can look at. You know, Ryan Spann looked amazing. I mean, Reyes <laughs> knocked out again. And, you know, ever since he fought John Jones, just never looked the same. And I think, you know, you go back and watch that fight against John Jones and you can watch it a hundred times and you can definitely say that Reyes probably should have won that fight. And I don't think he's just mentally recovered from that. Yeah. You know, and I think he was, a you know, because you look at what he was doing before the John Jones fight, he was really, really good. Right. Really, really good. Yeah. I mean, know? if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I haven't watched the Reyes John Jones fight since it's happened, but. Did what? Didn't he give him a little bit of a run for his money in that fight, or no? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Did, I mean, like, he took him to distance, and yeah. I think he, you know, people were thinking he was going to get the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, then my memory the was yeah. correct. But one other thing I did want to say about Ryan Spann is he said in the octagon, "This is the first fight he's ever trained for." Yeah, I don't or know. Like that's had a, a fight fishy. camp. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, he's insane. Whatever. Is that true or not? I don't know. Obviously, the guy trains. He works out. He's in good shape. He made weight. But maybe this is the first, like, real fight camp he's had. And if that's true, then that's very I think that could kind of just be getting lost in translation, too, where he's like, I feel like any level 
fight he's ever taken. Yeah. He's done a little bit of training. Well, I was going to say, you got to make I think that he does sure. it. I think that he's yep. was more kind of alluding to the whole, like, like wow, I had a dietitian. Yeah, I had somebody yeah, yeah, telling right. me what to yeah. do every point right. of the day to make yeah. sure I was ready for this fight. I've never trained like that yeah, before. Yeah, and, and wow, he looked all fucking yeah. awesome. And, and he also yeah. might have, you know, never trained before. Fuck, I don't know. No, but I, it's, no, I, I, I have agree. interpreted it a little bit more like you. that. I definitely agree with you. So, yeah, he looked super good. I mean, I don't know what, you know, I, I feel like Reyes should probably think about retiring. I mean, that's where I'm at with him. Yeah, I, I, I heard a lot like, of people say I that. I feel like he just got... You know, he just in his last what three or four fights. I mean, just did not look good at all. I mean, even in the fight you're referencing, where he did perform, it was against John Jones. And yeah. how long ago was it since John Jones' has fought? We're not referencing yeah. any recent time yep. here. Right. Yep. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, good for Ryan Span too. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, we'll see what's to come. But um, after that, so we got prelims. I mean, Brad Riddell. I oh, thought yeah. it was kind of a joke. I don't know he he got put in a rear naked and it was just gave up i mean he didn't even try and fight the hands it was just a weird it was a weird thing do you guys i remember you, 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 you talking i don't i don't remember this one specifically about but i remember you saying um about him not fighting the hands you were like he wasn't doing things well, that were he like, just wasn't fighting back like right. he wasn't normally you see guys trying to fight hands when they're getting put in a rear naked choke and he just basically had his hands down and was not doing anything yeah you and know? Uh, going back to what you were talking about before with the crucifix that uh, Molly McCann and all that, it's just like, I don't know. I feel like for me, a rear naked and a guillotine, those are two where if you get finished in those two, like there's the thought with the crucifix being like, man, you got bitched, like you got put in a crucifix. But that takes a little bit more technical skill versus oh, yeah. a yeah. guillotine and a rear naked. Jared could put me to sleep in about 30 seconds in either of those moves just yeah. having seen it before. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Squeeze real hard. Yeah, yeah squeeze like, yeah. and lock it in. Get, yeah. it, yeah. get it underneath. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he. I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about I mean, who knows what was going on? But, I mean, he, he looked like me trying to get out. I remember... <laughs> So quick story, when I was younger, my friend, one of my good friends used to wrestle and, you know, we used to get all tanked up and try and wrestle each other. And I was not a wrestler. I had no idea what I'm doing. It took him, I'm not kidding, 15 seconds to get me in a something that I couldn't get out of. <laughs> yeah, right. We, we I would a, always be like, no, this time it's not going to happen. And yeah. Like, no, he would do it. That's our, that's our buddy, Austin. We, uh who you guys will meet. He's going to be helping say, us yeah. out with some stuff and he'll admit there's a video where in eight seconds... The duration of the video, he is tapped and done, in our, in our undefeated room. Yeah, from me. Say. Yeah, that's what used to happen it's, to me. And it's nothing. Like. It's no shot at. He's twice as strong as me. He's bigger than me, and he's probably would beat my ass in a street fight if I'm being real. But like, it just comes down to knowing how to use your body and like stuff like well, that. Well, and I think that like a lot of that you know relates to UFC. I mean, if guys are way better at jujitsu or way better on the ground than other people, it shows for sure. Yeah, you know definitely. what I mean? And I don't know. Brad Riddell comes from a good camp. He trains with. Adesanya and you know I mean I you know I'm not saying anything against them so but it looked like he just didn't fight back so yeah there was no no handwork yeah who knows I hate to talk bad about these guys that fight that do a sport that I would never even consider doing (laughs) yeah Yeah. but you know that's why people are watching us because I hate when people would say like you ever talk about NHL and you're like dude that guy's trash man and then somebody's like well they're in the NHL it's like well no shit they're in the NHL they're fucking far better than me but they're trash compared to person A it doesn't mean we we can't have opinions exactly that's what I'm saying like you you still gotta analyze them you still gotta be able to like break down what's going on that's what's fun about sports is you know whether it's football or whatever sport you're into it's it's great to talk about it and yeah. analyze and you know be yeah. an armchair quarterback right exactly and i don't know none of these guys in the ufc are worried about like they're there they're no, in the yeah. ufc they're not worried about what we're being overcritical of his submissions yeah you know I mean? or no not brad riddell's never gonna see this so yeah or maybe he will <laughs> maybe he check will. the comments fuck you maybe brad. you will <laughs> fuck you brad um cool yeah, that was um, all for the prelims. I thought the prelims were good, though. I thought there were a lot of exciting fights. Um, yeah, this is a gr- this was a great card, top to bottom, and it was exciting all the way through. I didn't think I was just really disappointed in any of these fights. I mean, all definitely. the prelims were great. I mean, I was next fight we can talk about is you know the first first fight of the main card. Yeah, Dan Hooker and Claudio Porellas. Yeah, Poyas or Poyas. I don't, I'm not sure not how the, to say his name, I'm but. Not either. Super annoying fighter to me. Like, I don't like these guys. I don't know. It's just annoying to watch to me that a guy yeah. is just constantly rolling, looking for a leg lock every three seconds. Well, he's in the wrong sport. I tweeted out that, like, and obviously, like, it wasn't the worst fight. But, like, I in the heat of the moment, I tweeted out on the 5CD account. I was like, this is one of the worst main card fights I've seen. 
just in the sense of like he he was doing the wrong sport. Like stand up for a little yeah. bit, dude. Yeah. Like you can't go into this having like in a jujitsu. Jujitsu isn't gonna single handedly win your MMA fight, no. especially against fucking Dan Hooker. You start on the feet, dude. Like yes. you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like um, you gotta you gotta get some groundwork in on there. You gotta get some. You gotta tag that guy up a little bit. He's tough as nails. Right. Yeah. You gotta make it so. <laughs> he's at least thinking about both ends. Or, yeah. Or, you know, if I shoot, he's going to punch me or whatever. Like, Versus just Dan being able to stand up and be like, can we wait for this guy to get up? Like, yeah. stand up, stand yeah. up. Every like, time yeah, I mean, Dan engages, like, he... It's not like I didn't like the match. Like, I like these matchups because I liked what happened in this fight, and I liked that Hooker just pieced him up and yeah. was yeah. like, fuck you, Did I'm going to kick you do. in the stomach three yeah, times. Yeah, me too, because I, I like Dan Hooker. Oh, yeah, because yeah. that's the thing. I like him a lot, and I felt really bad that he lost his last couple fights or whatever. I, yeah. I really am a fan, and... You know, whatever. He just <laughs> was just aggravating to watch. And it was aggravating for Hooker, too, because all he kept doing was just trying to get his leg out all the time. You know what yeah, I, mean? I know. I know. So, I mean, he had a really good showing, though. And like you said, the only thing I really wanted to throw in there is that he, he needed it. And, and we love him. We love him over here at Five City. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was Dan, just Dan Hooker, uh, he did have a good – he had one – I just want to make sure we hit on the one thing that I thought was uh, that – I can't pronounce his last name, but Claudio did well. Yeah. Was, if you're, his, one of his signature – uh, submissions is that knee bar knee lock oh, and he yeah. had it. he yeah, had it yeah, on yeah, yeah, on Dan yeah. 100% yeah. and Dan just kind of muscled through it and then got him to a point where then he started uh, Claudio started kind of like panic wrestling and he yeah. started like trying to push his foot to the bottom of the mat and then Dan just was like okay I can rest and he literally sat there for about right, 20 because, seconds and regained everything. and that's what the commentators were saying it's like they you know hookers got so much ring experience that yeah. he's seen all this like he's not gonna panic yeah, when exactly. he's in there it's like he's seen what's happening yeah. in there and he's not going to fall for this stuff and he's too experienced to to do that you know so it's, it's funny you brought up that one leg lock that he he locked in yeah the announcer hyped it up i was listening oh it was the timbo sugar show today they talked about this specific instance and they said when you're training that right as soon as you lock that in, in practice the other guy taps right yeah and they were saying in a real fight it's like Break my knee, motherfucker. You know what I mean? You have to rip it through now. And maybe that guy, they were saying, Tim and Sean were saying, maybe he wasn't used to just ripping it through. And that's why he didn't like. Well, especially coming from a jujitsu background where the whole premise is kind of like taking people to that breaking point and not breaking them. Yeah. Versus like. And Dan Hooker is like. Think of Justin Gaethje. If you don't break him, he's going to win. Yeah, exactly. So like. Same for Dan Hooker. I was going to say, Dan Hooker needed a win. He will. He would have let him rip his knee apart. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's funny you brought that and up. Cause. One last thing about Dan Hooker. Yes, sir. Uh, today I saw on Twitter people were talking about just like the path Gilbert Burns is going to take and just giving him his flowers. And I had to kind of play devil's advocate and post the whole Dan Hooker knockout knee to the face from UFC 262 or something like yeah. that. Yeah, who was that 226. against? 226. It was Dan Hooker, Gilbert Burns. Dan oh, Hooker it was, knocked oh him the God. fuck out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot and, about you know, that. I mean, it's just one of those things, like, let's not forget, like, Dan Hooker is him. Gilbert Burns gave comms at this super good run for his money. Exactly. I mean, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Dan yeah. Hooker's a sleeper fighter, and I, anytime he's on the card, it's exciting. And yeah. that also probably played a factor in me being, like, a little disappointed in this fight is I wanted somebody who was going to give him a slugfest. Yeah. yeah. But I also yeah. wanted him to win, so I can't complain. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, though. Recency bias is a big thing. Yeah, Dan for Hooker sure. Is definitely legit as fuck. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the thing with the, these guys that have a lot of experience and are at the you know, not that he's at the end of his career, but, you know, he's yeah, not, not going to be... Yeah. Fighting for a championship, that's for sure. Yeah. And it was tough. He's had some tough fights. I mean, Chandler knocked him out. You know, that was Chandler's first fight in the UFC. Yeah, and, and that was on McGregor. Destroyed him. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And it was, you know, whatever. We'll talk about it's, Chandler. It's at least good minute, that uh, we got to see Michael Chandler, like, have this kind of rise going up and up and up if he's going to knock out somebody that we like because it's kind of like when your yeah. team in football like loses and like in in the playoffs and you're like well I hope this team wins the Super Bowl now so at least we lost to the Super Bowl champ you know yeah, what I mean yeah, like right. it yeah. will help showcase your skill in a sense yeah. for sure yeah for sure definitely so 100%. um so we can move on uh Chris Gutierrez and Frankie Edgar I mean obviously Frankie Edgar is a legend and Never want to see this happen, but, you know, to be honest, this is kind of what happens when guys are in their last fight. It seems like so many of these guys just getting knocked out or losing their last yeah, fight. Yeah, it's right. sports Tough sometimes have storybook endings, yeah. but the UFC and MMA and fighting as a sport as a whole, yeah. you are not guaranteed a 80-mile-an-hour fastball down the middle for your last pitch. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's almost impossible, right? Yeah. I mean, these guys who are... Unless you're Khabib and you leave early, which yeah. again usually because right. are you going to expect but, somebody to like 
lay up on you for your first time when they, when he's trying to make it. It's yeah, like exactly. you've already been there. He wants to knock you the fuck out and get yeah. you out of this position. Yeah, exactly. It just so. over and over again, it, it, it MMA proves to be a sport that is not forgiving no matter Nothing's who you free. are, how old you are, if it's your last fight, whatever it is, if you need the money or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, like look at Connor. He's at the top of the world. He then just gets beat the fuck up over yeah. and over. No offense to Connor. But no, oh, no. He gets he's, beat the fuck up. Yeah. I mean, his last fights were bad, for sure. Um, yeah, so super, dis- you know, obviously see disappointing to see Frankie Edgar go out like that. The guy's an absolute legend, and, you know, <laughs> what else can you say? I mean, it's just, you know, obviously everybody wanted to win. Hometown crowd wanted him to win, but, you know, it just wasn't the storybook ending, like you said. And it was, yeah. You know, whatever, I mean, it happens. Yeah, like, like you said, it does happen, and it's just this is a sport where if you're not at the peak and you're – you're just not going to, like, whatever. You can't, it's, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but MMA is not a sport you can squeeze out a win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or it's like, oh, like, I don't know. I don't know. And yeah, unless unless you go through a war and you, the d- decision by the judges, but it's just not forgiving. Yeah, overall, we see that, yeah. for, like, his career, there's going to be two types of people that analyze it, and they're the same people that watch a series on TV, get all the way to the series finale, and then they rate the entire show on the series finale. Right. right. He had 23 exactly, great yeah. fights that he won. Exactly. Yep. Twenty three and eleven. Right. Just 23 saying, 11, you can't. Yeah. You can't. Exactly. Same way you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't judge it by the last page. No, I definitely, definitely agree. I mean, yeah, like like you guys said, he's an absolute legend. And, for uh, sure, should not be sold short. He'll at be all. he'll be in the UFC Hall of Fame. I would assume. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. sure. Yep. All right. So moving on from that, um, Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler. Sir. Probably my favorite fight. I mean, I, I don't know. I'll like maybe I'll just say one thing to start. But <laughs> I was like, when this fight started, I really got butterflies thinking about Chandler and Gaethje because I knew I don't know it's just every time Chandler fights you just know that it's going to be chaos yeah. you know what I mean and that's what I like about him is that it is absolute chaos all the time like it's all or nothing with him right? yeah. you're not going to you're not going to get a fight from Chandler that you know and I heard Ariel talking about this today it was like he wasn't like that back in uh Bellator yeah like he was not you know, he had some good fights, but he was not like he is now where it's all or nothing. He's like a showman, yeah. yeah. He yeah. just comes out and I think and he and Ariel made a good point. It's like it's almost he's to the point now where it's like it doesn't even matter if he wins or loses. Yeah. And well he defended the belt so long in Bellator. Right. And it doesn't long, like but. now it doesn't even matter if he wins or loses because you know what you're getting every time from him. It's gonna be an absolute chaotic I mean, he just comes out and that first round, I must have watched it like seven times over I again know. because it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I, I think, uh, might not make the most sense, but like it might come down to like their personality, I guess. But like, I choose Michael Chandler over a Gaethje if I'm going for like that like slugfest, crazy fight every single time. Like, yeah, y- the speed Michael Chandler has is unreal. Like he he's movement, he's constantly moving, bouncing around. He's like he's literally the Energizer Rabbit. He's never fucking stopping. He's well, just, that's go, go, the thing. Go, go, he go. just takes right. it to the guy. He yeah. does not let up. You know what I mean? It's like the pace that he keeps up. And that, I mean, <laughs> look, I've watched the Chandler or a Chandler Gaethje fight a hundred times. And yeah. it's like my, it's my favorite fight of all time yeah. for sure. Because you're right. He comes forward, but then Gaethje just like, he wants to do it. He yeah. wants to. Gaethje's pretty like, much like, come Gaethje's on. like, yeah, he cannot me, wait. Me, me. Like yeah. it, I mean, that first round was like, it was all right. That first round was better than this first round for sure. But this first round was very close second. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was pretty much all Chandler. And then at the end, you know, Poirier, Poirier showed that he's a better boxer. Yeah. You know, obviously, he's a better boxer than Chandler. Yeah. And Poirier said it himself. He's like, if Chandler would would have thrown, you know, if, if he was a straight-hand shooter yeah. rather than looping punches, I would have been gone. Like he said, I yeah. would have been knocked out. It would have been done. And so, makes you makes you think, though, is are we going to see Chandler start training some straight-hand fucking punches? I was going to say. I, but that's how, at the end of the round, that's how Poirier pieced up Chandler. It was like, straight hands right down the middle that were right on target. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? And yeah. that just shows, and like, the other he's, thing too is he's like, Im- he was impressive. Like, the, the guard, like, you you obviously can come around and catch somebody on the side, but if you just, like, keep piecing that up and with the straight punches, they're going to come through, and this is going to disorient and hurt you a lot more than this. Yeah. This is so much tougher. You know well, what it I'm comes saying? quicker, too. If you're yeah. just coming like this, you telegraph it if you're coming around. You know what I mean? Like, well, you, and it's accuracy. I mean, Poirier mm-hmm. was just... <laughs> 
he was on target. I mean, at the end of the round, he must have hit him 10 times in the face. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah. Was, I agree. That was a gruesome. It was crazy. But, you know, the, and then, you know, in the beginning of the fight, Chandler took it to him, took him down, you know, yeah. was rolling, you know, had him in. in Snotting on his face and right, shit. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, second. I mean, that was the thing. So Chandler gets, like, completely busted up at the end of the first round. Yep. Then comes back in the second round and dominates him on the ground. Like, takes him down and leaves him there and bleeds all over him. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. You know, it was, it was, I mean, the amount. I called him a dirty motherfucker for putting his fingers that in my was, mouth, too. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> He's like, uh, so my hands might have entered his mouth. Yeah. Intentional <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, thanks for not biting. Yeah. yeah, he actually talked about that. He was like, I don't know, his hand, you know, it's like, he said every, well, whatever. Of course, he's going to make an excuse and act like it wasn't on purpose. And maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but. But, I mean, he had a legitimate point. He's like, there was so much blood and so much, everybody, you know, we were both sweaty. And it's yeah. like, we were just, You're just, whatever. Stuff's going everywhere. Yeah, there's that that, you know? that <laughs> yeah, uh, right. little clip of that blood that kind of, like, it's like a clot breaks in his nose. And it just pours right yeah. onto his, Dustin's mouth. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where I think that uh, Dustin was good about in the, like, post-fight presser and everything. Talking about, he was like, that's fighting. He's like, that yeah. happens. He's like, that yeah. you can't yeah. control. Like, right. he was trying to breathe. But yeah. he's like, the, the finger in the mouth pissed him off a little bit, I yeah. think. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I don't know, maybe Dustin just got, like, rusty fish hooked in the locker room a couple of times. Brought back a couple of bad memories. Because then he wins the fight. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Piss him yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. It was like, you know, <laughs> it was just funny to hear it afterwards. Just hear them talk about it. But, I mean, you know, he, you know, it was... You could have legitimately made the point that Chandler was up two nothing. Yeah. Going into the oh, third. for sure. Yeah. I mean, he got like I said. If you watch the first round again, besides the last, and it was literally the last thirty seconds that Poirier, yeah, came in and. But look, all credit to Poirier. I mean, you you fight a guy like this and you come back and submit him in the third round. I mean, it's. I was gonna say, yeah, I think I give Chandler the first two rounds as well, but I think. Poirier showed that he's the better fighter. Yeah, by, by yeah. being the better yep. boxer and coming back in the third round and submitting Michael, Ch a very sweaty that resonates bloody, the most with me. Michael Chandler. You yeah. know what I mean? Like right. the right. third, like if you're down, like Leon Edwards, you're down two and you need the third and you can pull the third out of your ass and win. Like to me personally, that's what really resonates with me because yeah. think about like any other sport, like fourth quarter down ten. Yeah, right. You win, you like that's huge. Like. Going yeah. into the third period and it's two nothing. Like and you come back and you get that first goal to go up two to one. Up, you tie it up. Now it's game. Like 100%. that always is gonna. You have less time. You have yeah, to do exactly. more in less time. It's just harder. Well, Russia's and that's on, the thing yeah. for Poirier too. Yeah. Maybe that was his game plan. Maybe it's like he knew Chandler's gonna come out <laughs> crazy like usual. Yeah. Maybe burn himself out, and you know it doesn't look like maybe Chandler has less energy. But by the third, yeah, less energy and yeah, inadvertently, you know, I mean that's just what happens. And if Poirier, maybe Poirier knew in his head if I can get to the third, and you know he's a little more tired than I am, then I can you know win the fight or whatever. But yeah, do you see the ice mask is back? Chandler does like post fight oh. ice mask talks with his kids oh, really? and stuff, <laughs> and he has like a funny voice when he's doing it. And oh, yeah. funny. I was wondering, I was like, I don't see a lot of fighters. This is just like a cool little tidbit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see a lot of fighters doing that, and I was like, I wonder why. And then I like just threw like ten seconds of research. It's like, oh, Michael Chandler's wife is a doctor, mm. so he probably comes home after meeting with all these doctors and then gets that next level treatment where it's like, yeah. oh, no wonder he's wearing a full face ice mask to reduce swelling. It's constant yeah. pressure that's and cool. has an yeah. elastic yeah. band pulling yeah. it onto his face. Yeah. It's I like see. that's got to be such an advantage, like yeah. for during camps, even like when you go home and like. Most people like turn that switch off. It's like he's still recouping and recovering because he has a doctor twenty four hours yeah, a day right. around him, which With is cool. His wife. I yeah. saw a funny video. It wasn't maybe his. It maybe it was his last fight. Maybe the fight before he had the mask on. Yeah, and his son was staring at him. He's like, "Son, it is okay. Dad <laughs> yeah. made some bad decisions." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. It, he's like in the in the new one. He says something along the lines of, "He's like, I have to say." I do not recommend fighting as a profession for you guys, <laughs> even though it gives you this wonderful life. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, that is funny. But Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely a big Chandler fan in general. Like, that stuff, for sure. you know, I don't know. I think he works the mic well when he was calling out Connor. I'll never forget that. Just an all-around yeah. good guy, too. And I think definitely. that uh, kind of like Brandon Moreno, like, anytime you get just, like, like outside of fighting, just like just all around real good dude, it's, like, hard not yeah. to root for them in the oh, octagon. Sure. Well, and I think I that, agree. like, now... <laughs> You know, I know he called out Connor after he fought uh, Ferguson, right? Yeah, after the Ferguson yeah, knockout. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. 
now as it's going on more and more and Connor's, you know, who knows when Connor's coming back. But now Give the longer this goes on, the more this fight makes sense, I yeah. think. Give it to him. It really makes sense. Give it to him. Yeah, I mean, it, I, you know, I don't know who, whatever. It, it would be amazing, yeah. to be honest. But, you know, and I don't know. But to be honest, I don't think, I mean, if Connor is really going to come back and actually try and make a run for a title, then he's not going to want to fight Chandler. Oh, man, I'm just, like, picturing Connor, like, bouncing around and Chandler, like, doing hit. Like, Connor bounces laterally, I feel like, and Chandler's, like, coming towards you, coming away from yeah, you, coming yeah, away from yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, I just, oh, I don't know. And he's dude. just fucking kicking them. I, like, I can, I just, just oh, throws those man. kicks like they're relentless. Well, like, he yeah. just, con- like, I love like, the first three in a row, right? Yeah. Yeah. three in a row. It was, yeah. like, that was nuts. beautiful. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, and, like, those three leg kicks that Chandler throws, it's, like, I feel like the, the, uh, the avid MMA fan and like somebody who's really involved and like knows like sees those leg kicks and is like yeah. ooh 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 and like somebody else is like punch him punch like no yeah. you, like he's yeah. chopping down the tree like well, and that what happened like, too in the oh, first man, round right. if you guys watch it again Poirier checked one of those kicks and it hurt Chandler his his like, foot swelled up yeah. so quickly yeah. and was yeah. Yeah. like significant right. like, he was chief red foot right. after that like right. it was bad that's yeah. the thing I think like us as amateurs don't understand like when someone checks a kick it mm-hmm. actually hurts the guy more than right. the guy that threw the kick I don't know, you know about you video gamers that's a parry right there <clears throat> oh what's that it's uh, a parry oh yep 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 um <laughs> he Mike parried him. <laughs> Dude, who was um? Oh, it was the Sean O'Malley fight. Sorry, I was trying to think. Um, yeah. when he, when the thing with Pedro happened or whatever, and they everyone was saying like, "Oh, Pedro had the leg kicks. Pedro had the leg kicks," and he's like, "I checked every single yeah. one of them." Yeah. He goes, "Everyone hurt Pedro, not me." Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. That, I was trying to think of what fighter that was right. that was saying that, but it was Sean yeah. O'Malley. Yeah, yeah. So crazy fight. I mean, obviously we, like I said, I was looking really forward to this, and Chandler is one of my favorite fighters too. And yeah. and I don't know, I, I don't know what it is about Poirier. I mean, I. I just don't like him that much, and I don't know yeah. why. I don't even know who why. ain't got jujitsu. Yeah, I you. don't even know. I don't know why because he's a good guy. He's he does a, a lot yeah, of charity work yeah. and like sure. all this other stuff. And but I don't know. I just don't. He's just not likable to I've, me. I've I don't know why. Swayed you though a little bit. I like. Yeah, him. maybe. I don't like him because of the whole Connor thing. Yeah, but I'm also just so petty about that and probably small minded. So I probably swayed you a little bit. Yeah, I. I it's not that I don't like him. I just like Chandler a lot more. I guess. Yeah. I think Dustin appears cornier than Chandler too. Yeah, and Agreed. I think without, that, I think that like Dustin Agreed. has like a certain aspect where it's like Chandler, like it's a uh, without how to word it. Chandler does a lot of things. You know the guys that are funny without trying to be funny. Yeah, Chandler's yeah, nice without yeah. trying to be nice. Dustin's yeah. trying to be nice. I, I yeah. definitely get that vibe a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah, it's just his personality, but that's just how some whatever. That's just how he is. I, yeah. yeah, it's just how he talks and how he whatever carries himself, and yeah. doesn't make him a bad guy. It just doesn't make him as likable, I guess, as other guys. <laughs> but but people really like him, and I yeah. Look, I it's not that I don't like him. I give him. I think he's <laughs> he's definitely one of the greatest fighters going right now. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, he lost to to Oliveira, but. I mean, it's another Hall of Fame I mean, guy. Give this guy, say. you know, give this guy Makachev. Let's see what happens. All right. Know, seriously. Right. I mean, I don't know. Then we'll see who really don't got jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, really, it just, it just, I don't know. To me, I'd love to see him make, he, he has to get another run at the title, I think. You know yeah. I mean? I mean, he's just developed so much throughout his career. I mean, you look at the first Connor fight in that era. Well, it's a totally different even era of the UFC. He's been doing it for so long that, yeah, he's got Right. And that's the run. thing yeah. when, when the Connor fight was coming back around, you know, he could have either fought for the title or fight Con, you know. Yeah, but, right. And he chose to, you know, fight Connor, which obviously <laughs> who want, doesn't want that payday. But, yeah. But I don't know. I'd like to see him. You know, that's why, that's why it goes back to like, I don't really agree with, not that I don't agree with. And I think it's going to be a great fight, Makachev and Volkanovsky. Volk, yeah. But, you know, it just throws a wrench into all these other fighters' plans. Yeah. You know I mean, for sure. For sure, we'll see what happens. Though it's the great thing about the UFC is, thing I feel like things happen last minute. Fight, you know, fights get put together. Who know? Who knows what's next? No, I, I know, know what you're Dustin. saying though with the uh, with like the Volk Makachev thing though. Like I've seen some people on Twitter too, kind of being like, "Is this a waste of time?" Question mark. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, is it? I don't know. Like don't it low key, it it kind of like hear me out. It's like it's almost like a like a big huge filler. Like you, you need a fight. Oh well, that that just gave itself to us. Yeah. We can just let yeah. that happen. And oh well, now it's a pound for pound thing too. And yeah. I don't know. I just feel like it was kind of uh, 
if you would have asked me at like right before he didn't see the short guy like Makachev after his win, right. who's Makachev going to fight next? Volkanovski wouldn't have been named. Like, yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought of it think, either. I don't think yeah. I would have thought of him. But there were definite plans of him moving up. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Know. I mean, well, well, okay. Even if he's that a dominant whole champion, out didn't you know what happen, I mean? Yeah. yeah, There's nobody for Volkanovski to fight down. You know, I mean, Ortega was the guy, and that didn't never happen. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you know. yeah. So. We also know Khabib and Makachev definitely talked about that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it'll be a good fight. You know, like you said, doesn't make the most sense. Probably not. But it'll be a good fight. Oh, yeah, for it's sure. It's going to be an amazing fight. Like, I, I'm super interested to watch it. I just, you know, and I don't know. Maybe it's just a thing about these guys moving up to a different weight division and whatever. I mean, some guys like Connor did it and won. But, you know, Izzy did it and got dominated. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, true. You know what I mean? So It's hard. But it's hard, yeah. And I, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess Overall. enough on that. I don't know. I mean, what's next for Poirier? Who knows? You know, I think he's going to have to wait around a while to fight. But maybe we make another Poirier um, Oliveira fight. I mean, yeah, I hey, don't know. I don't know. Oliveira you know. definitely needs a fight now. Yeah, I mean, and then it's who's he going to fight, you know? Yeah, right. That fits. Right. Yeah, we should do like a whole. We, we need to have a board for whenever we predict whose fight is who's next, and we like should, it would be like all right. LW board, like, says Poirier. Dana yeah. White's board, like that. Oh, the fight room or whatever. Yeah, that, that yeah. board's oh, not. The, yeah. oh, don't they call it the war room? The war room. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, dude, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. But yeah, yeah we, I was gonna say we should have. We should just do a whole episode, maybe like before the year ends, right? Like like a little like okay, all of this happened throughout the year. Yeah. Here's oh, what like we our think recap might happen. Yeah. Right next. I was actually gonna mention. I can't wait to for that, Aaron. Yeah. You're coming on next. Hundred <laughs> percent. He knows a lot. He knows a lot. Hundred yeah. percent. I was sweet. I was gonna mention go, leading into the main main event of the night that yeah. like I can't wait for the 2022 recap. This year has been the Ooh, year yeah. of the yeah. upset. Sure, yeah. The year Dude, of it's the been a crazy one. Like, it's just been ridiculous. Like, um, well, and that's the thing I tweeted out too. Is like, who would have thought 2022 was gonna be the year that Usman and Izzy would lose the belt? Yeah, right. and Charles, okay. and Charles, and Charles. Right. Like, so what? you crazy. Yeah, exactly. So crazy. I, you know, especially Usman and Izzy, I, I didn't think those guys were gonna ever. And lose, it's been the you know? year of like, it's been the year of uh, like the the champs falling yeah. and people just getting fast tracked low key too, like yeah, Pereira, right. Sean O'Malley, yeah, right. Makachev. Yeah. There's been like, so many really yeah. crazy matchups that and we got to. Is see. that like the direction the UFC is going, where it's like we're gonna get like we'll we'll really get to see with Bo Nickel, like if Bo Nickel just like kind of gets this. Fast track yeah. again. Then if you're I a have contender a feeling and you Bo come Nichols in, going to have one to two fights, and then he's going to be fighting the number one contender. See, I, yeah. I like that though yeah. because like yeah. low key, on, like I understand that like there's guys who grind and grind and grind, just like in any other sport to get to where they're at. Yeah. But sucks to suck. There's people who are always going to be better than you, and guess right. what? They get granted exceptional status and they get to do cool shit. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. work harder. Well, like, and just the same. How it is. I mean, yeah. we'll talk about Perea, but that's what happened with Perea. Yeah. yeah, I was just saying. You're just saying. And it's also it's obviously a huge factor that he already beat Izzy twice and. Sucks to suck. That's on a resume. I beat Israel Adesanya twice. twice. Now I've beaten him three times. Yeah. And, like, I don't know if we're going to pop up some of these memes. I might have yeah. to lock us in yeah, for yeah. saying it. But there's Definitely one I saw it. where it's, like, Pereira. And he's just, or Pereira. And he's just sitting there with uh, golf clubs. And he's all dressed up to golf. And it's, like, <laughs> Izzy takes up golf, Pereira. <laughs> where, where's the first tee? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's great. Box, what about yeah. just today? He was given a, a, a brown belt. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, that, yeah. and that goes to show that, like, Makachev's 100% right. These yeah. guys are just getting yeah. gifted right. belts because right. give me one if you can give me one right example now. in the comments of in that fight how he just he displayed that he should be given a brown belt and not that he beat a purple belt in a fight he didn't really do much jujitsu right all right yeah, so he, when like, well, no, okay. it just we, becomes about one upping is it yeah it's, it literally was just that yeah we're gonna get to that but on the ground he didn't even know what he was doing he was lost like yeah. I'm not kidding yeah. I probably could have defended a little bit better than him and he did like he was not another guy that was not going after the hands was not doing anything right he's defense. just used to being a bigger anything dude that I happens yeah. well yeah. he is just he you on paper he's the same height all right before we talk about this is he just stands lower when he fights yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah all right we're gonna get to all that but let's talk about uh Zhang Wei Li and Carlos Esparza first a little bit okay um, Let's do it up. Um, not, not to shut really your discussion off, but no, we're no. trying to go in order here. Yeah, I really. Don't. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Tough matchup for Carla. This yeah. you know, Zhang Wei Li is absolute, you know, crazy person. On, I mean, she is unbelievable. I think you know, I think she's, she's absolutely amazing on the feet. You know, and she showed it on the ground against one of the best grapplers in the division. You know, and it was tough. It's a tough fight, and Carla's coming off the fight against. You know, um, Rose, Rose, 
who, you know, was that was definitely the most boring fight I've ever seen in my <laughs> entire life. And, you know, Carla ended up winning that fight. Um, she just barely did enough to win that fight. And Rose, you know, thought she won that fight. And I can't believe she thought she won that fight because yeah. she didn't do anything to win that fight. Right. So anyways, people were, you know, and I feel like Carla, like if you've watched any of the, like the embedded stuff or whatever, I feel like Carla is like your mom. Like yeah, she's yeah. such a nice person, it seems yeah. like. And she just, you know, you would never, like if you met her just wherever, you would never say, oh yeah, she's a UFC fighter. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> right. She just doesn't strike me as the type. <laughs> this is kind of off topic, but I'm thinking, and this might sound fucked, but it's a real question. So if, if you're testing the athletes for PEDs and other performance enhancing drugs, do, is, are, are female fighters... Ex, like excluded from certain testing in the sense of like testosterone is a like performance enhancing drug for them. Like I'm, I'm going to say it is, is Wei Li Zhang on testosterone. She's yeah. I don't she's know. Crazy. And like, I feel like yeah. that's like not even really that fucked up because like, that's a huge, like it, they her, just don't look the uh, same. Her physique is insane. It's, she's, she's got yeah. these insane. broad shoulders. Her, she's got like a Dorito triangle cut of her yeah. back. Like, yeah. It's just like it looks like if you ask me, like whether she's intentionally doing it or not. Maybe like her protein powder has a little testosterone in it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, yeah, like she's jacked. <laughs> and yeah. she's like, crazy. Yeah. yeah, I feel yeah. like every once in a while you see whether it's a woman or a man, UFC fighter that is just like, what is that? And guy you know doing? she's not like, taking yeah. creatine or anything because that yeah. defeats the whole purpose of the weight cut. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. I feel like every once in a while you see a UFC fighter and you're like. You can't possibly look like that. Yeah, and, it's, and okay, <laughs> Paulo Costa. I'm not just talking about women here. Oh, like yeah. Paulo Costa, you're trying to tell yeah. me you never juiced once. Yeah, like yeah. Once, one yeah. time. Just one time. Just try also, it. take his Twitter away, please. <laughs> <laughs> take it away. Yeah. Or like give I him like a it my, I find it Oh, it's fucking hilarious. It's so hilarious. Funny. It's just I, I think so it's funny. also it gets 10 percent funnier with like the lack thereof of English. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It's like yeah. the grammar it's so used. broken. Yeah, absolutely. That is hilarious. So. So I don't know. I think this was a good fight for a while. I mean, Carla, I thought had some good opportunities. She had some good, you know, she landed some good punches. I thought for sure, but yeah, you know, whatever. I think Whaley was just a stronger fighter, and you know, there's a reason that Carla was a super big underdog in this fight. And, right. You know, showed it showed. I you know, it's hard to it's hard to go back and think like, yeah, Rose beat Jang Whaley. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Like, I know. It's I mean, crazy. After Rose's last fight, you just think, geez, what the heck was she doing? But. But yeah, I mean, it's that's like how even Rose doesn't UFC look like she's is. on testosterone. No, yeah, right. No, not at all. But no. I mean, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't have much to say, much else to say, other than I was disappointed that Carla was getting booed so much and whatever. I mean, it's not her fault that she won that fight, you know, whatever. And I think that's why she gets yeah. booed, and it's just yeah, that's unfortunate. Any, I mean, she doesn't make any she, sense. She something me. I didn't know. Sorry, not to cut you off. Something I didn't know coming into this fight is she was the first champion of this division. Yeah. That's well, this was she right. was champion twice and lost, and now lost Twi the, in the rem or in the, in her first defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying yeah. she was she was the first yeah. like she had the first yeah. belt in this yeah. when the division was yeah. created, which is pretty yeah. cool. And yeah, she shouldn't be booed. She like you said, she went in there and fought and tried to win, and she won. There's not yeah, like, yeah whatever. It was a weird I mean, fight, she's, not entertaining. You but. know, she'll you know she's definitely one of the best in the division and. You know, yeah. whatever. Win some, lose some. That's how it works. But you get, you know, you get dominant fighters that come up. Like Whaley is dom She's dominant. And, yeah. And now I think you got to see another. I mean, you got to see another match with with Rose. I think. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who else is in that division. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the fight they're going to make next. It's probably a fight to make for sure. So yeah. who knows? Um, but on to the main event. Uh, obviously, a lot to unwrap here. Mm -hmm. Um, but. I think first impressions for me, as soon as I saw them enter the ring, I could not, like, I didn't realize how much bigger Perea was than, than Adesanya. Yeah. And I just didn't, I, maybe I didn't see them standing side by side in the, and it didn't, it didn't strike me in the face offs or anything like that. But when they were both in the ring, I thought, you've got to be kidding me. Like <laughs> he is huge. He's huge. Yeah. Huge. Was, wasn't there a video of him? Weighing like yeah. two eleven after the weigh-ins, like yeah. before the fight or yeah. whatever. Saturday yeah. morning, two yeah. eleven. Two yeah. eleven. It's Saturday morning. Yeah. Man, that's. You think Izzy saw that video before the fight? Who knows? <laughs> that'd Probably. Be, that'd yeah, be, I think, I mean, he yeah. obviously knew, but I think, I don't know. I don't think you know. Obviously, Perea is just a, a huge. 
huge guy. I feel yeah. like he he also having fought Pereira twice probably kind of figures at this point. Like, yeah, he balloons up pretty quick after the weigh in. Like yeah. he just like it, but he drinks a glass of water and he puts on five pounds from it. Like not in like yeah, a I'm fat sure way, just do, like it I, gets thicker. I mean, oh, it's, right. it's it was it's amazing to me to see these guys cut that much weight and then be okay to fight. I mean, I thought. You know, whatever. I mean, this was this was a fight I thought was dominated for four rounds by Izzy, and you know, yeah. it was it was he was really, especially the end of the first round. If the end of the first round had five more seconds, he probably would have knocked him out. I mean, he I had, agree. He had I one agree. good punch, then one punch at the bell, maybe a little after the bell, but he was. <laughs> He was stumbling back, and one more right hand would have put him out. I was standing you know? up screaming. I thought yeah. that it, the start of the next round was going to be for sure, like just finishing off right yeah. where he left off, and yeah. it was not. Yeah, I definitely thought that was the beginning of the end. Well, it wasn't, and you for could sure. see that. I mean, obviously, Izzy is, you know, he had to be careful. You know, I mean, it wasn't like a thing where he's just going to go come out throwing, and then all yeah. of a sudden he gets, like, this guy just touches people. Like Strickland was just saying, today I saw an interview with him, and he's just like, I don't know what it is, but this guy just touches people. They go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it's just evident watching him. You know what I mean? It's He just seems like one of those guys where he is, it's effortless power. You know what I mean? For sure. When he's throwing, it's not a, a whatever he's throwing with, with bad intentions. It's weird because he looks a little bit awkward, fights a little bit awkward. I mean, throws some really good kicks, really good knees. I mean, yeah. you know, but. Obviously, when the fight got to the ground, I mean, Adesanya is not known for his jiu-jitsu by any means. Right. And he was basically dominating him on the ground. It was, you know, it was... I thought if he could have took him down in the fourth round again and and whatever, you know, he, I think he was trying for that, but I don't think he was... I mean, Adesanya's not comfortable with that either. You know? No, yeah. I Especially mean, not with Pereira. Yeah. yeah if, if I had to guess, he's probably more comfortable with the, the shorter, stout, more build. Yeah. He's got the being advantage. Length, yeah, there, being yeah. lengthy and, uh, like, on the slimmer side, that's, right. that's what you want to wrestle. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're not confident in what you're doing on the ground and you're going against such a, a bigger individual, one false move and you're, you're going to end Paying up on the, the bottom getting hammer-fisted. <laughs> if you remember, too, when he fought Blahovich, a lot of the fight, Blahovich was laying on top of him. Right, You exactly. know what I mean? I, I mean, that's how he beat him, yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah. Yeah, so... So I don't know. I Crazy. thought, you know, and the, obviously they got. I thought it was. I thought it was, you know, a dominant fight by Asani up until the fifth, obviously. And but Perea went out there. I mean, it was like, it was like something you see in a movie. Like I saw that they, I think it was Dana White had headphones on, listening to Perea's corner tell him before the fifth round. It was like, you got to knock this guy out. You got to go out there and do it right now. Yeah. And that's what he did. You know. Yeah. I mean, someone had to. At least in one round against Izzy, take it to him and just throw caution to the wind. You know what I mean? Because or not let him play his game, not let him. Keep well, right, you and distance, you're exactly you know right. I, mean? I thought Cannonier should have done that. He was losing the fight for nothing too. Yeah. And what did he do in the fifth round? He didn't do anything. Right. You know he Izzy pieced him up in the fifth round. Izzy was the more aggressive fighter in that fifth round in that fight. Yeah. And it was not even close at the end. You right. know. If you're fighting a guy like Izzy or Kamaru, who is a dominant champion up until this year, obviously, their game plan is not going to be able is not going to be to go out there in the first round and get you out of there. It's going to be, stay, don't hit me with anything big. I'm going to piece you up and I'm going to win this fight, whatever by whatever means necessary. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah. So, someone who is going into a fight against a dominant champion needs to throw caution to the wind a little bit because. The champion is the cautious one, trying to keep. The yeah, balance. I think they do in the beginning, but like you said, and I think that's that's the reason O'Malley won. Yeah, that's what I'm because saying. Because in the third round, he's like, "Well, it's all or nothing. You might as well go for it." Yeah, and exactly. Can, that's why I don't never understood. Is like Cannonier didn't do anything. It's like you're gonna yeah. lose, dude. You're gonna lose anyway. Right. Yeah. Like right. you're gonna lose. You know. Yeah. I mean, so, easier said than done. But yes, I agree, hundred percent. Right. It, it is, so but it is. I mean, these guys are like, if it was me and I was a fighter, I would say if I'm losing four rounds to nothing, I'm going out there and I'm throwing haymakers. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's I'm like get knocked out or whatever. Unfortunately, or that is just how it you is. Know? Yeah. It's like it's a. Uh, it that is just how it is. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I I totally agree. I definitely. But agree. I think a lot of it too is that these guys get tired in the fifth, especially goes to five rounds. I don't think Cannonier was 
maybe he didn't have the energy to do it, but whatever. Yeah. I, I think the other thing too is I feel like sometimes they like the fighters, not not that they like live in like a fantasy land, but like they might start thinking to themselves, like, maybe I don't even have to. Like maybe I could win points wise, and then they're like thinking a little bit too hard about it versus yeah. going for yeah. that X factor shot. Well, and that's where their corner comes in too, because you'll see corner guys say, You're losing <laughs> like you're down two nothing or yeah. you're up to nothing or you're right. we have it scored even or what you know they'll tell yeah. them right up they'll yeah. tell them right but up i feel like some fighters too like i don't think this gets touched on enough by like any like mma media is like how, like i feel like the corner is only as effective as the fighter lets it be like yeah, for sure. the there's like so many fighters like sh- like people will go in and be like yeah, I was. I don't remember half of the fight. So yeah. how useful was your <laughs> yeah, corner? Right. You're, you're yeah. not listening to it. And yeah. I mean, arguably, sometimes your corner hurts you if they're screaming for, at you what to do. The other guy is not plugged up. He can hear it too. And he's yeah. and the, yeah. that's like exa- like not to. I hate to draw a comparison to high school wrestling because there's no comparison. But that's what the fuck do you think somebody's thinking when your coach is yelling something at you or your teammates are yelling right. something at you? They're like, okay, well if he's going to do that, coming. I'm defending. I'm defending yeah. that exactly. Yeah. Like yeah, exactly. And that was really evident. With the fights in the apex. I mean, there's no when they had nobody in there, you could hear everything like in Madison Square Garden. Okay, maybe you can't hear as much as you think that when the corners are, yeah, you know, because the crowd or whatever. But man, when the apex, we could hear it on the broadcast. The guys yelling. I, know. I mean, we you know we don't really hear that. Yeah, typically, but yeah, I mean, you're right. It's like COVID sports were awesome. Those right. guys are just some some they of those were. coaches are pretty annoying, and it was like. They're just yelling out constantly. Oh, what yeah. To do or what, yeah. You know, and whatever. And that's it's sometimes that's whatever. the tactic, too, though. They're right. yelling out false info. Yeah. Right. Right. Or like right. code words. Well, and like, they have code words, yeah, yeah, too, sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the coach, you know, coaches have their own styles, and that's just how it is. One thing I was going to say, you brought it up a little bit, like coaches hurting the fighter. If the coach has the round wrong and they say, you're up two rounds, you're up two rounds, or we have you down two right. rounds, right. and he's really up two rounds, yeah. and he tries to do something stupid, ends up getting knocked out. There's a lot of things like that where, like, maybe the coaches mislead the fighter, meant you know, with their mentality in the. Yeah, fight. and I think a lot of it's the other way. I think a lot of them mislead their fighter to think he's winning the fight, and right. maybe when he's exactly. not winning the fight, and they don't yeah. have the you know they don't have the guts to tell him, hey, you're not winning this fight. It's like yeah, yeah. you got you got. Well, look at how many little. times you see the corner yeah. throw the towel in when they arguably should. Like, yeah. uh, who is that that one green haired fucker that Sean O'Malley fought? His oh, his Chris his corner Minahuno ever intended on him fighting again? They should have thrown that towel in after yeah. the second yeah. round. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many shots yeah. to the head are you gonna watch, like let your boy take? Yeah. Right? Like it's yeah. it's it's uh, no joke, especially when you're fighting the guy who preaches that probably harder than anybody else. He doesn't even take headshots during camps. I was gonna He's say, like, I've yeah. done it enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, and it, yeah, I mean, I've heard fighters too where they like tell their coaches like, "Don't throw in the towel. You throw in the towel, you're all fired." <laughs> like you know what I mean? But that's like yeah. so crazy. Like why would you even put? You can't put someone in that position that's where they're watching shit. Their, that's what I'm saying. But like, even if it was Justin Gaethje who said that, like, man. That's putting your coach in a real crazy position. Like he's watching. If he, if you're in that position, you're like getting pieced up and pieced up, and the ref's not stopping it. Like you gotta throw him. Well, I thought you know if you mentioned Gaethje, that brings me back to like the Gaethje Ferguson fight where, where yeah. I thought it should have been stopped way before. Like the, mm-hmm. the corner should have stopped it. Like they yeah. should have told Ferguson, "You're not going out for the fifth round." Yeah, because when, he was really really out of yeah. it when he's you know? backing away. Shaking yeah. his head to keep himself conscious and spitting you know I mean? blood at the same yeah. time. I mean, he yeah, was really, the fuck yeah. And I would venture to say that that lingered with him for quite some time. And I mean, yeah. that front yeah. kick that Chandler doesn't yeah. even train that knocked him out <laughs> might not knock him out if he didn't get yeah. heast up for I mean, was, 30 yeah, minutes by Justin Gage. Definitely. Great point. great point. Yeah. I mean, those fights take their toll for sure. And, and I don't know. This one, there's a lot of controversy about, you know, people thought stop. You know, the stoppage was too early and, you know, it's a champion, let the champion get knocked out, blah, blah, blah. But, and I thought at first I thought they, you know, at first I thought they stopped it too early. Like Mark Goddard was the referee. And I thought like, that was my first reaction. But then I, I heard Rogan and them talking about it and, and they're exactly right. You know, he had his, he was going like this with his arms and had his head down. Yeah. You know, the next, the next thing Perea was going to do was knee him in the head. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you, I mean, and that, you know, I I, I think it a hundred percent it was the right stoppage after I heard that explanation. Like I said, I'm a novice, whatever. But you know, hearing that explanation and and it's it's their you know and like Goddard was tweeting, it's like his job to keep the fighter safe. I was mm-hmm. gonna say, that's what I was gonna just throw shout out Mark for liking the tweet. Oh yeah, yeah yeah, Mark Goddard. Mark Goddard. 
Um, but that's what I was going to throw in there at the end. It's like the ref's not deciding that this guy lost. He's deciding he's not safe anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's yeah. in a state where yeah. he can't defend himself. He's not saying, oh, yeah, it's over now. You know what I mean? He's saying Israel's going to get really hurt here in a second. You yeah, I mean? I mean, that's that's the thing. He's saving them from from a massive injury, I think. Yeah. He's you know, hoping they fight again. Yeah. 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 But he's not yeah. saying, oh, now, now Pereira landed the 46th punch he won. You know what I mean? It's like. Right, right. At this point, Izzy is in a position where if he keeps taking punches, it's going to be really fucking bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he has to. And yeah. Izzy even doubled back and said that, like in the beginning, when it first stopped, he asked Mark, like, "Why'd you stop it? I was still moving and I was still coherent." But after like talking with friends and coaches and everything, he and yeah. his team, I think the general consensus that they came to at the end was that like the team was proud of him. That's all he cared. Yeah. And Mark's a good ref, and that Izzy trusted Mark would make the right decision to stop yeah. or continue the fight. Yeah. But just playing devil's advocate, I saw. Uh, video um i'm not going to be able to remember the name but basically it's just mark goddard referring another adesanya fight and izzy's just piecing this dude up non-stop 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 and it should have been stopped like four or five times and people are like well why didn't this one get stopped yeah, yeah. and then it just goes yeah, to well. like the whole like judges and the scorecards being more consistent and the refs being more consistent with stopping right. fights and i think that that's just kind of like a battle we're never ever going to win well, and the yeah. whole thing is like in the heat of the moment, subjective. these guys have to make a split, you know, a yeah. split second decision, and that's, yeah. you know, sometimes they're gonna, sometimes they're not gonna get it right. That's just how it works. Sometimes well, yeah, they'll like, stop it early, and sometimes they'll be like, "Well, maybe I should have stopped it a little." Before and you know again. what? Honestly, like compared to the fucking shit that NFL fans have to deal with with their refs, yeah. compared to the UFC refs, UFC refs aren't so bad. No, yeah. I mean, the thing is, right. NFL yeah. refs are rigging games, dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, dude, I whole Chiefs haven't been offsides sides in five years, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking motherfuckers. Um, no, yeah, I mean, I think the UFC ref or is the hardest ref. <laughs> like, like you said, you got to make yeah. a decision right. in a half a second whether you should decide whether this guy wins or loses. You know what I mean? And this guy fights three times. This guy does this three times a year, and I'm going to decide right now if he wins this one or not. Yeah, you know it's a mean? tough job. It's it hard. really is. And it's like, you know, whatever. I mean, ever, obviously there's going to be criticism any way you look at it. Yeah. But I don't know. It's I thought it was the right call in this in this particular, after I watched it again and after yeah. I – but my initial reaction was not that way. I thought, well, they should have probably – I don't know. Maybe <laughs> should have let it go a little longer, but – but I don't know. You always go back to you don't want to see that guy get hurt. It sucks the ref gets so criticized when there's like when the cut man and the doctor say, Yeah, he can't go anymore. They're like, damn, well he's, like, he's, he's yeah. a doctor, he's right. It's like, <laughs> yeah. well, what the fuck yeah. do you think the ref did? He just put a refing uniform on one day and was like, I'm gonna ref fight. Gonna it's like, nah, he went through a lot of training, <laughs> yeah. learned a lot. And how yeah, many exactly. events do you think Mark Goddard's ref? Yeah. He's, he's got every, a high I mean, ass fight IQ. Yeah. yeah. I mean Countless. he seems to be one of the referees too that's almost at every event, I feel like. Herb yeah. Dean was a pro fighter for five years. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I mean, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, like, swallowed wrong. Yeah, and we yeah. haven't really seen – I mean, I don't know. Have we, Herb Dean was not on this card. I, I know that. No, yeah. No, card before that, I remember he was. Was he, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a fight yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, whatever. It <laughs> Sometimes is what it Herb's is, what brings in the people to the fight night, you know. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of guys fighting. It's like, well, Herb Dean's ref. Well, Herb Dean's there. We know him. Let's go. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's in like, all the games. Yep, yep. I'd want it's a like, Herb Dean uh, signature. Dude, Bruce Buffer, right? I want a Herb yeah, Dean, like, dude, Bruce card, Buffer. Yeah. That's one of my favorite clips that we ever posted about him warming up. The ones yeah. where him stretching dude, I, or whatever. I, I love how Bruce Buffer has a has a brother that does it, too. Like, that's the funniest Michael, shit to me. Yeah, Michael yeah. Buffer was the original. He yeah. was the yeah. boxing. Yeah. It's like yeah. Mike boxing Buffer, guy, Bruce yeah. Buffer. Yeah. 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 Wait for Amazing. Just wait till Steven Buffer comes out because you're not ready. You're not ready for Steven. Go! Yeah. I mean, he brings it every time. That's the thing. It's like that guy is never down... You know, no. you never see any lack of energy from him. <laughs> from no, him. That's for sure. for sure, no matter who he's, in, oh, who he's calling. One other thing I wanted to bring up about this card has to do with Bruce Buffer. Oh, yeah. Is when they, like, whatever happened with that one woman's fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, where like, he weird. looked... He looked so pissed when that was. Yeah. He was like standing there, like this, just yeah. staring at him, yeah. like staring at him. Loki making him look bad. <laughs> He's yeah. like just making him stand there with his yeah, dick in his hands. Say, yeah. and, and then, like, I'm pretty sure, like, they walked back to the judges' table, and like he looked at it, and then like looked back at the judge, and then looked at it again, and just like walked away or whatever. He, like, yeah, we <laughs> tweeted out. You, I, it was you said it, but it was stuff, uh, yeah. it was like. Did Bruce just look at this and say, nah, I can't read that shit. <laughs> like, recount that. That was so bizarre. That was so bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was bizarre. He said. <laughs> that was super bizarre. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. But, um, yeah. 
UFC is lucky that that was on a early prelim fight. Oh yeah, that wasn't magnified on social media because it was, uh, it was or strange. anyway, more it was just reminiscent yeah. of when the teachers coming around collecting the work. You got your homie. He was like, "Come on, quicker, quicker, change oh, yeah, it. Yeah. You can't get that one right. That one's not allowed change to be right. It, change it, change it. Yeah, <laughs> she's but, checking this one. Change it. <laughs> yeah, but That's yeah, funny. that was super strange. But all in all, I thought this was you know I don't know it's you know it's recency bias, but probably card of the year. I don't know. Oh, it was great. I agree. It was great. I don't know. We got to go back and look, but we'll do a year in review recap maybe and yeah. go back and see For what. Sure. You know, obviously, top, top five knockouts, top five submissions. Back. Yeah, Definitely. we're going to go back and look at Definitely. the cards, and I'm, I'm sure that we're going to find one that will challenge this one. Yeah, definitely. There's been yeah. a lot of great ones this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. She yeah. just do everyone's own top five list. I mean, that's even shit that we should yeah. start working on now in the sense of it's oh, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Down with that. For sure. And it's got to be, a, you, dude, I, also, it's got to be like a secret. We can't tell each other like what we're putting on the right. list, no, too, because yeah, then yeah. we'll get to see It'll if we have it. the same yeah. opinion yeah. or not. Right, exactly. Yeah. I want it to be definitely like truly. Um, yeah, well, there's most couple like categories, like yeah, yeah. favorite sleeper fight of the year, like as in like you might not have known one of the guys going in, or like yeah, 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 yeah. Like right, yeah, exactly, like 100%. rookie of the year. Like, there will be a like lot that. of yeah, exactly. You never yeah. know, maybe in like five years, the nickel, so the five city rookie of the year is like something where they come on. And <laughs> I was like, gonna hey, say, thanks for giving me <laughs> rookie of the year. I was man. gonna say, and we could be talking to the uh, Bo Nickel in five years from now, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. It is. Yeah. He's not even as had a real UFC fight yet, but you know what I mean. It'll be cool. I'm out. make my list. I was gonna say. Dude, let's go. Oh, let's there's go. been a lot of chaos this year. I was going to say, sure. it'll be definitely um, a year to review. That's for sure. Well, yeah. and one one more thing I heard that they're working on Kamzat and Colby Covington next. So, Dude, you like that Kanye be... moment I just had? I said, we won't share the list. And I go, Kamzat's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> said, wait a second. Wait, Fuck. Wait, damn yeah. it. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. just kidding. Now he's not. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be super interesting. I'd love he's to see Colby list. fight. Time's up, but we're running out of time That's here, be so a great, we'll great uh, fight, wrap but this up. Yeah, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I got nothing. So I, I thought right, I good. had like a cool one-liner, but I don't. Yeah, so. yeah good. So we'll, uh, you know, next pay-per-view is uh, December. 24? It's supposed to be the John Jones one, isn't it? No, this, 282. No, I know. This is supposed to be the one that John Jones is Oh, well, no, it's not. He's or, not. Or was supposed to be? not close. No, it's yeah. Porshaka and Tashara. Oh, Christ, yeah. yeah. So. Yep, yep. And yeah. Patty Pimlet's on that card too. So let's go, let's go. Big step up for see him. See if the Barstool athletes. Athlete you know. Dave's looking for a win. I was going to say, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. So we'll for see sure. on that. But cool, all right, cool. let's wrap really it up. It. Yeah. All right, sounds Thanks good. See you. Yep.